Okay, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about authentic assessments. So what are authentic assessments? Authentic assessments are assessments in which we are really assessing things um, in a real life way. And we're really moving from that snapshot to a scrapbook. So, and I like to, I like this metaphor a lot because if we think about a snapshot, we can all think of like really terrible snapshots people have taken of us. We're like, wow, that doesn't represent how I really look. But if I take a scrapbook of all of these pictures of me in my life, that really shows a full picture of who I am and what I've done, right? And we'd much rather our lives be represented by a scrapbook of our lives than just one like random kind of terrible snapshot, right? So um, how can we make our assessments look more like this? And authentic assessments are one way to do this, right? So authentic assessments are realistically contextualized. Um, so this is the way in which we use our knowledge and abilities in real world situations. So two examples, um, which one do you think um, is more realistically contextualized? Right, um, building that perimeter um, calculating perimeter to build a fence is much more something you would do in real life, right? Okay, um, it requires judgment and innovation. So a uh, unstructured problem, those messy problems that we talked about um, la in our last lecture, right? Um, a specified goal, but not the steps to be taken, right? Um, so which one um, do you think is more, requires more judgment and innovation? Um, right, the oil spill near our house, right? We're really having to think about what's the best way to, to um, clean it up rather than just researching. Um, asking students to do the subject um, of the discipline that you're studying, right? I'm not just reciting or replicating, but doing the work of the field, the work that actual people who are studying this do. Um, so which one do you think is more indicative of what someone sitting Hamlet might do? Yeah, exactly. Writing is seen um, in modern um, language is much more applicable to the type of work that it's someone who's really working in theater would do, right? Um, replicating challenging situations where adults are truly tested in the workplace, so civic life, and personal life. Um, the messiness, important goals, and specific situations. So which one do you think is more realistic here? Uh, yes, of course, creating that argument, right? Um, and finally, um, assessing a repertoire of skills and knowledge to complete a multi-stage task, um, more than just a sum of drills. Yeah, this one should be pretty obvious. Um, I think none of us would think that an FSA practice would be authentic. So it's like thinking about how we could um, use all of those same skills to build a doghouse and think about how much more engaged our students would be in this in this example using those same math skills, right, that you would be doing for an FSA practice. Um, giving students um, time to rehearse, practice, consult resources, and get feedback. And that transparency, that opportunity to improve. And I think this is something that when we're thinking about performance tasks and projects in class, we often forget, right? Um, and looking at these two examples, I think the second one is something that we so often see in schools, right? It's, okay, we have a big project, do it at home, bring it in at the end. And honestly, if we can move more towards this first model, we're going to see such an increase in, A, the quality of work that we see our students do, engagement. We're going to see so such um, better results, right? And we're going to increase the equity among our students, right? Because we're going to be giving them that time and that opportunity. We're also going to be building those relationships. So it's really a win-win across the board on everything if we can kind of engage in this type of project-based approach. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about curricular priorities for authentic assessments. Um, how frequently should we be using authentic assessments? And I get this a lot. Like students are like, oh yeah, this sounds amazing. I'm looking at my curriculum guide. How would, how could I do this? I can't do this all the time. And my answer is always, of course not. You certainly can't make everything you do authentic. But how frequently should I be doing authentic assessments? And I like to think that this um, this chart comes from the Wiggins and McTee um, Understanding by Design book, which, by the way, is a fabulous book if you ever get a chance to look at it for curriculum design. Um, and we think about um, if we look at our um, 
our curricular goals, we have these big ideas and core tasks. And those are the kinds of things, like if I was going to sum up my course into two or three statements, those would be those big ideas and core tasks. And then those things that are important to know and do, these might be the standards I have to cover. And then the worth being familiar with, that's the kinds of things that I teach every day. And I'm really going to think about my authentic assessments really focusing on that center core with maybe that blue core on the outside. Um, I'm really thinking um, in actuality one or two a semester, depending on my content area. So um, in history, it might be your history fair project or your science fair project in science, right? It's, it's thinking about how can I use this effectively to meet a large number of objectives and really teach the things. Um, a lot of times when teachers are asking me, well, where should I use authentic assessments? I say, um, where do your students struggle? What is the content or the concept that year after year consistently st students have difficulty understanding? Focus your performance assessments, focus your authentic assessments in that area, because that's where you can really build understanding. Spending the time there will help. And then thinking about how you can blend that in with other things and those big ideas. Okay, so that's Authentic Assessments. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to um, seeing your projects this week. Bye.